Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Welcome to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. I'm Bishop Ernest Johnson. I pastor the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church and World Television Ministries. And I just want to welcome you to this dynamic broadcast. You know what? I want to get straight into the word of God because God is we've been working on. If you were here last week, we are working on a powerful revelation of the condition of the church that I did not realize was in the book of first Kings. And to the Lord, I was having a conversation with my son and the Holy Ghost just started giving me revelation about the state of the church. And the state of the church now is that it's built for idols. It's built to keep you from worship. Amen. You notice I um, went to a, a Catholic funeral uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I, you know, I had been to the Catholic Church since the eighth grade. When God talked to me, started talking to me, and I got the revelation of, of repentance, being baptized in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Ghost. So I've never really been back to a Catholic Church. I went to one that was like a charismatic Catholic. And I'm not here to attack the Catholic faith because I grew up in the Catholic Church. I learned about Jesus in the Catholic Church. But what I wanted was I wanted God to talk to me, and they couldn't show me how to make that happen. Until God himself spoke to me and he started leading me and guiding me. So I'm not here to, to bash the Catholic. But uh, I do understand that the Pope just uh, agreed to same-sex marriage. He agreed to allow homosexuals to be priests and all this other stuff. Well, that's nothing because they were already in there. But, but the point is he high signed that gay marriage is okay now. So that means that he has yielded to the, the people. So... These are idols, and I want to talk about that. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your people right now. Father, bless this word. Let no flesh grow in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to be right back. We're going to get right into this lesson. Get your Bibles. Get your pencils out. You're going to want to read. You want to going to get into this so that you understand that it's idols that's holding you up. And it's holding up the church. And it's making us powerless against the, what's happening in the world. Amen. But it's time for us to get rid of these idols. We didn't even realize these idols were here. Amen. But let's find out what some of they are. Okay. We'll be right back right after this. If you've been blessed by the ministry of Jitter TV and Bishop Johnson, we would love to hear from you. For prayer requests and donations, please visit us online at www.jittertv.org or call our prayer counsellors who are standing by to take your prayer request and donations 24-7 at 310-637-7086. Thanks in advance for your prayers and financial support as we continue to change lives around the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Welcome back to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. Today, we're talking about part two, amen, in the book of 1 Kings, amen. We're talking about these idols are holding us up, amen. And that is what, and, and I was, I was, God was giving me the revelation. He was talking to me. I'm excited because that is the condition of the church right now, amen. There are churches that are existing that God has not set up, that man has set up. Amen. And so, the, and these uh, churches, and these churches are set up based upon idols. And what are they for? So that you don't have to worship. And I was talking about how I went to a Catholic funeral. And when you go to that funeral, it's exactly an hour. It's a formula of what they do. Amen. It's no worship. It's no testimony service. It's nobody getting getting saved. There's no altar call. You never have an altar call. You you know, they tell you to repent, you know, or, or ask God to forgive you. Then they give you communion and then they roll the body out. And, and it's exactly an hour service. Everything is written for you. Everything is rehearsed. Everything is said. Amen. It's just words back and forth. But there's no worship. There's no worship. But they have you bowing down, dipping in water, doing all this to these statues. Every church, every Catholic church, except the charismatic movement, they got rid of all those statues. They got rid of all those candles. But all these Amen. In this, 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 just not just the Catholic Church, there's other churches where they have all of these idols set up to keep you from going into worship. They do all the worship for you. They do all the wording for you. They do all that for you where you don't have to worship. You don't have to see God. You don't have to 
uh, uh, seek the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you understand where I'm coming from? So you don't have to go no further. You don't have to do nothing. And you just feel okay because you've been to church. But unless you have had an encounter with God, unless you have spoken with the Lord, unless you have walked with God, can I get a witness in the house? Amen. In other words, what has God done for you lately? What has he said to you lately? What has he told you to do lately? Amen. You've got to get back to a place of worshiping God so that God can speak to you, getting in his word of God, study the word, read the word so that God can open up his, his wisdom and knowledge to you and then get back to this place. The Bible did not say that they that have the Holy Ghost, amen, are the sons and daughters. But he said those who are led by the Holy Ghost, those who are led, L-E-A-D, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. Amen. You have to be led by the Spirit. In order to be led, you have to hear God's voice. But look, in 1 Kings chapter 12, Jeroboam set up idols because the kingdom was split. But the northern kingdom had the temple for worship. So it was less people. This is what else I noticed. It was less people in the northern kingdom going to the temple. It was less people going to the temple than in the southern kingdom. So in order for Jeroboam to maintain control, he had to keep them out of the church where the baptism in Jesus name was being taught, where the people were being filled with the Holy Ghost, where Jesus was setting them free. And the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. So when you're not in a place where you are free to worship God, to testify, amen, to pray, to receive the Holy Ghost, to be healed, to, be, to, to get, get hands laid on you, get the devil off your back. If you're not in that place, you're not in a place where the pastor can look at your soul and watch over your soul and minister to you. Amen. And, and, and preach about three things, four things. One, uh, Paul told Timothy, preach the word. That's what goes on in a, in a godly church. Amen. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. For the time will come where men will not endure sound doctrine, but shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. But here's leadership. Here's leadership. Just like in America, they're setting up idols. Football was, was not on a Sunday back in the old days. Football was on Saturdays or Fridays or Thursdays. But now all the sports is on Sundays. That's an idol. Amen. All the things that keep you out of church, going to the beach, going to Disneyland, they're giving you special discounts on Sunday. Why? Because they're attracting you away from the church. They're attracting you away from God. Woo, my shot. And that's why the Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few, few there be that find it. And he said, but broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in that way. That's why the scripture says in the last days that many of you, many of you that are watching me right now will believe the lie and you're going to be damned. Why? You believe you don't need church. You believe that you can just watch church at home. You can just watch here on the internet. You can watch on YouTube. You can watch on these TV channels. That's what you feel like. You don't need to go to church. But the scripture says, and Paul told the church, fail not to assemble yourselves together, especially as you see that day approaching. If you look in the book of Acts, the first church assembly they had, which was a revival crusade in the middle of the Pentecostal feast of the Jews, in the middle of the Pentecostal feast, God birthed the church with the Holy Ghost. First in Acts chapter 2, they received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, the Bible says when they heard these things that they had killed Jesus, they were pricked in their heart. That means they were touched in their heart. They felt convicted and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent 
and be baptized every one of you, not Methodist, Catholic, Buddha, this, he said every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Acts 2.41 says they that gladly received his word were baptized and there was added unto the church that day about 3,000 souls. How do you get added to your church? Amen. Well, if the church is ordained by man and if it's run by people who are not even saved, it's run by people that are not of the Levitical priesthood, amen, people that have not been ordained by God, well, they're going to take your name, your number, they're going to give you an application, they're going to want to know how much money you make, how much tithes you're going to pay, amen, so they, they're doing all that and they don't care if you're living in a gay marriage, they don't care if you're shacking up, they don't care what kind of job you have, you could be a bartender, you could be selling and liquor you can do what they don't care about all that all they care about amen is to tell you that Jesus loves you and he's going to bless you amen but not till you repent come out of your sin the Bible says that the first sermon Jesus preached when he was here was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand so as I as I finish this in first Kings uh, chapter 12, uh, we see what happened here in verse 28. Uh, um, Jeroboam was afraid, I mean, Rehoboam was afraid of losing his control. I mean, Jeroboam. Jeroboam was afraid of losing control. So people are afraid of losing control of you in that false doctrine that you're sitting up in, that church that has no power, no Holy Ghost, no holiness, amen, no righteousness, amen. Yes, they're teaching the Bible, amen, but they're not doing it with demonstration and power. Paul said, the words that I speak to you, I speak not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. So you're okay being settled in the church where there's no healing, there's no miracles, Oh, yeah, they laying hands and folk laying out on the floor, but nobody's receiving the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Nobody's being healed. No blinded eyes open. Amen. No lives are being changed. Amen. Oh, yeah, I know you, you, they got some robbers, ex-robbers and ex-dope dealers. Amen. Amen. But they're still doing the same thing. They're still lying. They're still cussing. They're still fornicating. They're still doing everything they want to do. And you're sitting here talking about this is God. No, that ain't God. Amen. Right here, Jeroboam tried to set up, set up. He didn't try. He set up these idols. And the Bible said he even created a feast day. Now, notice some of these religions have all these different feast days that they got. Well, we, 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 uh, we celebrate Rosh Hashanah. No, we need to celebrate Jesus because the Bible says there's no more male, female, Jew, nor Greek. It's all about serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And I realized this last Christmas, this was a, a very special and different Christmas. This was a Christmas where I realized the entire earth was celebrating the, the birth of Jesus Christ. If you're going to celebrate his birth, why don't you celebrate his life? If you're going to celebrate his birth, why don't you celebrate his life? Why don't you live for him? Amen. If, it's, if Jesus, the whole world celebrating Jesus, why are you going to all these offshoot religions? They got all this other stuff going on outside the Bible. The B scripture says they are the spirit of Antichrist. They are the spirit of Antichrist. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? They are the spirit of Antichrist. And all these things outside of Jesus are the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. And so they're against Christ. They're talking about Christ, but they're against Christ. They only talk about Christ. Why? Because nobody can just can come out and get a straight lie and say that Jesus ain't got nothing to do with nothing. They cannot deny the very Jesus Christ. They cannot deny the power of Jesus Christ. They cannot deny the deity of Christ. They cannot deny the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're trying, but they can't do it. So here, Jeroboam, afraid to lose control. So what are people doing? Afraid to lose control. 
They want control of you. They want control of your mind. They want control of your money. They want control of your body. They want control of everything about you. So what do they do? They have set up idols to keep you out of the house of worship. Keep you. They've set up surround surround sound TV in your living room so you can sit up and watch church but it ain't like being in the house of the Lord it's not like being in the presence you feel the presence coming out right now you feel the anointing coming out right now but it's nothing like being in it it's nothing like being in the presence of God can you understand what I'm trying to tell you being in the presence of God I'd rather be with Jesus than to hear about Jesus I want to hear about him I want to be with him and like the woman that had the issue of blood she said if I may but touch the hem of his garment I shall be made whole my God my God but idols have been set up to keep you from coming to the house of worship to keep you from getting up and praying at night to keep you amen from worshiping God to keep you and the scripture says the father seeks after those who worship him in spirit and in truth God will come looking for you if you just start worshiping right where you are but idols have been set up to keep you from worshiping so Jeroboam set up the, the thing at Bethel amen he kept them in Bethel to worship uh, idols so they wouldn't go to the, te the temple of God and some houses uh, some houses of quote unquote worship have set up idols amen the pastor the deacons the ushers amen and the scripture says they're not even of the Levitical priesthood my God that means they have not been ordained by God. So that means you got gangsters running the church. You got thugs. You got lesbians. You got homos. You got everything running the house of God. And they have not been ordained by God. And that's why the church is packing out. Because <laughs> you ain't got to deal with no conviction from sin. Everything is everything. Look what the Bible says. Now, I'm gonna let me go back and say this. I'm not preaching against, I'm not saying God hates homosexuals or lesbians or fornicators or liars. or He don't hate them. He hates the sin. And he came to change your life. So if you are struggling with some of these things and trying to get right, God is on your side. He's trying to help you get right. He don't hate you. He loves you. But he wants you to get right. And to walk in his righteousness. So I'm showing you how Jeroboam set all this stuff up. Amen. Set up these idols. But watch this. God is going to send a prophet. There's a prophet coming. There's a prophet or a bunch of prophets this year. That are going to come and prophesy against your idols. And look what it says here. Chapter 13. And behold there came a man of God out of Judah. By the word of the Lord to Bethel. Okay. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Jeroboam, Jeroboam stood by the altar of an idol. Amen. Some of you are going to church and you are trying to worship God in a place that God is not there. Amen. God, listen, I have a sister that moved to Texas and she said, Pastor, I'm looking for a church. And, and she said, I'm trying to make sure I go to a church where they have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. I said, child, please go to where they got the Holy Ghost. Please go where they baptize in Jesus' name. Please go where they're preaching the truth. If they're not preaching the truth because you have known the truth, the truth has made you free. And if I teach you the truth, you'll know what a lie is. I don't have to teach you about all these false religions. If you know what the truth is, the truth shall make you free. So the Bible says that, uh, behold, there came a man of God out of Judah. Listen, where'd the man of God come from? The place of worship. The place of worship. The place of worship. The place of worship. God sends his servants out of the place of worship. Those that are worshiping God, God uses them and he sends them out. Amen. And so here comes the man of God. And, 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 and he said, uh, behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. OK, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. Amen. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high priest, amen, of the high places who burn incense unto thee, and men's bones shall be burned upon thee. 
This is the judgment that is coming to the house of God and is coming to the city and is coming to the governments that have set up idols that keep you out of the place of worship. You're in a place of Bethel, which is a place of idol worship. It's a place of demonic activity. It's a place of celebrating demonic activity, celebrating demons. Amen. This is what Bethel was all about. But the prophet came to the altar while he was trying to burn incense and, and, and he prophesied against the altar. I prophesy against anything that is not like God, anything that is not established by God, because you have become an idol and a stumbling block to people who have walked out of holiness, who have walked out of preaching the truth, who've walked out the churches of power, talking about, oh, well, you know, it's a new generation. We do things a different way now. We don't do all that speaking in tongue and all that shouting and dancing and prophesying and laying on us. We don't do all that. We just go to our church and we just, you know, uh, we, we speak in a, a, you know, we do our little thing. Amen. Listen to this. I'm not putting my mouth on no church. I'm not putting my mouth on no pastor. You belong to God. That church belongs to God. Every leader in that church belongs to God. And every member of that church belongs to God. But if you, if you are not where you need to be with God, pastor, get where you need to be because judgment is about to sweep through. And he said judgment will first begin at the household of faith and everything that's not established by God shall be shaken. Amen. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God. See, this is how people who are bound in idol worship, how they respond to the, to the word and to the prophecies of God. To the word and the prophecies, he said, when the King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, who had cursed, who had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he had put forth against him, dried up so that it could not pull it in again to himself. So God cursed his hand when he put his hand against the man of God. So when the Pharisees and the false prophets and those churches that are set up for idol worship put their hand toward the men and women of truth, God is going to shrivel your hands up. Amen. And the altar was thrown down and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat me now of the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me again. And the man of God besought the Lord. See, we are crying out for you. We're crying out for your church. We're crying out for y'all. And all y'all want to do is hate on us. Fight our God who is Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. Jesus is the one coming back soon. And we're trying to help you get ready. Not because we think we all that in a cup of tea, but because we love you. Some of you are reacting because you think you all that in a cup of tea and you think you got all the truth, but that's not the truth. Serving idols and letting idols hold you up is not the truth. And look what he said, I got, I got to go. And, and the man of God besought the Lord and the Lord King's hand restored to him again and it became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give thee reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou will give me half of your kingdom, half of your house, I will not go in with you, neither will I eat bread nor drink virgin in this place. For I was charged by the word of the Lord, saying, eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again the same way that thou camest. So he went another way. And return not by the way that he came to Bethel. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, 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 this is 1 Kings 
chapter 12 and 13, you need to read it. This is the condition of the church right now. A lot of churches are there that God has not built. We've lost the focus of the church. Our focus is to get people saved. That's our whole focus. When John the Baptist came out of the wilderness, his whole focus was to get people baptized to prepare them for the coming of the Lord. Our goal is to get people baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, to prepare them to come for the coming of the Lord. That's what our goal is. And if the church does not have that vision, if the church does not have that goal, and after they are saved, is to help them stay saved by continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking bread of prayer. If that's not our goal, we have the wrong goal when we talk about building a church. What good is it if you got a new baptism pool and you baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? What difference does it make if you have brand new chairs and all that and ain't nobody saved? Ain't nobody got the Holy Ghost and everything is just dead. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen? God bless you. This is Bishop Johnson. Don't forget, get the anointed, free anointed oil, absolutely free. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. Ask for prayer first. Please ask for prayer. We want to agree with you in prayer for your needs. Then tell them the Bishop Johnson says, I can get the anointed oil and the prayer cloth absolutely free. And we will send it right out to you. Post is paid. Amen. And don't forget, I want you to get our new pamphlet. Amen. After death, what? Amen. It's a, a beautiful thing. It has a, a different panels with different information. Amen. And uh, so just call right now and we'll send it out to you with your bottle oil and your anointed prayer cloth. Okay. Well, we love you. Don't forget to support this ministry. Amen. Because it's because of you, the partners in this area while we're on this television station. So help us stay here to keep preaching and winning souls and our young people. And amen. Last Sunday, we had people over 60 getting baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost. How about you? I give you a personal invitation to come visit us at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. Okay? God bless you. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. On behalf of all the saints, partners, and friends of this great ministry, we say to you, no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. All right, God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I'm here to tell you about my new book. Actually, it's the second edition of Hollywood Preacher, and it's called God's Hollywood Preacher. It's got plenty of pictures. It's re-edited. It has some great new stories in it. I want you to get your copy of this book today. Amen. God's Hollywood Preacher by myself, Bishop Ernest Johnson. It's a memoir of miracles, faith-building miracles, faith-based miracles, for famous, unfamous gangs, you name it, there are powerful testimonies in this book. You can get it on Amazon.com, amen, or you can order online at GitaTV.org or call the numbers on your screen, 310-637-7086 and get the book, okay? God bless you and have good reading.